Hi folks, I am back with another of my occasional retro computing videos and this one's going to be a product review of this which is known as the Bush CRS 132 tape recorder. It looks like an old tape recorder that you would have you, you would have seen back in the 1980s, uh, used with a typical 1980s computer. Uh, it's certainly styled that way, but it's not old. It's new, because look, it's got USB, and you would never have got USB back in the 80s. It hadn't been invented. So the idea of this tape recorder is that you can take the game ROMs that you can download from the internet, put them on a USB flash drive, and load them into your 8-bit computer without actually owning the tapes. It does of course have a tape recorder but so it's retro <laughs> and it's uh, modern at the same time. So I use a little utility called tap to wav that I got from the utilities page on the World of Spectrum website. I put a couple of games on here and we're going to try them now. So pop it in I think it auto plays, yep. I want to stop that because I don't want to start it playing. So on the spectrum we got to do load, speech marks, speech marks, enter, and then we go play. Let's see what we got. Okay, we've got the game Hero. And as you can see, it's loading perfectly fine. And no tape wheels are moving. So directly off USB, through the cables, to the spectrum, and to me. So, quite an ingenious product. Um, I should explain this strange way I've cabled it together here. I think when Bush made this, they weren't really thinking of the computer market because they put a stereo output jack rather than a mono one, which all the old tape recorders would have had. It tended to be called ear rather than headphones. So when I tried the normal mono spectrum cable in this originally, it didn't work. So I realized I had to convert it to, uh, there's the loading screen coming in. Very nice. Yeah, ignore these little artifacts here. Um, the Spectrum has seen better days. It's, it's hanging on to its life by the skin of its teeth. This was in my friend Gary's uh, attic for a long time. And it's a small miracle that the keyboard membrane doesn't need replaced. It's actually still working perfectly. And it's powering up okay. So uh, let's uh, <laughs> hope for the best here. But uh, yeah, so I had a hook through my uh, cable collection and I found a little splitter that allowed me to take a stereo mini jack to two mono phonos and then I connected a single phono cable which had a, a mono mini jack on the other end of it so that's how I got this to work with the spectrum there is a more elegant solution to this you can buy the appropriate cable that will convert a stereo mini, mini jack into two monos um, but this is working fine and here we go um, I won't bother letting it complete because uh, these games tended to, let, to take about um, four to five minutes to load. So we'll just uh, we'll break out of that. I'll show you how you would do multiple games on one stick. So it's still loading in as you can hear, but I've reset the computer. I'll do load quote quote again, and I'll simply press the fast forward button, and it will go to the next track if you like and it is booty. But let's say I didn't want booty, I would just hit break, do load quote quote again, and hold on a second, and then press fast forward again, and I'll get the next game, which is Galaxian. Okay, so this is how we do it. Um, let's break out of that one. Whoops, okay. Now, interestingly, this tape recorder also, I'll just stop that, this tape recorder also has a record function. And I'll show you that now. I've got an old tape that we're going to try. It's just music. I wonder how many of you remember this. It's a cover tape from Computer and Video Games magazine containing the soundtrack to 720 Degrees and Outrun. So, 
let's see if we can record this to USB. So on the side we have a little button that switches it from USB mode to tape mode. And all we need to do to record is play the tape and hold down the play record button for a second. Whoops, there we go. And it's going fast. Now the reason I can't hear it is because I still have this cable plugged in which is acting like headphones which cuts out the speakers. So I'm just going to... I'll just stop it there and when you press stop it automatically stops the recording. So if I now press play, I can take the tape out just to demonstrate that there's nothing in there. Press play. Give it a second. Oh yes, I put it onto tape mode. I've got to put it back to USB mode. There we go. And it should auto play. I gotta fast forward through the tracks that I've got on. There we go. Safe or die. Tip MP3. Okay, so we can do that. Now obviously, if you're doing that, you should also be able to record your computer games onto USB as well, if you have any on tape. And I tried this one earlier. It didn't work initially, uh, but I tried it again after pulling the cables out of the side so there would be no interference, and it worked perfectly after that. And it's also a fast loader, which are notoriously more difficult to get working and the fact that it worked, I was very pleased with. So if you happen to have a Spectrum and have some old tapes and you want to get them preserved digitally, this is a good product for doing that sort of thing. And now I want to come to the one disappointment that I've experienced with this. I'll just put our cables back in here. Yep. Now, you see also that I'm running a mono microphone cable from here around to the back of the spectrum as well, just like you would have done back in the day with an original tape recorder. Um, I have tried recording a program that I've typed in on the spectrum to tape and it didn't work. Uh, so, hmm, I didn't know what to make of that. Um, I have tried that on more than one spectrum and it's it, it do, the fault does seem to be with the tape recorder. Playback is great, recording to tape, not so great. But I also wondered, does the unit actually support recording directly from the Spectrum save function straight to USB while avoiding tape altogether? And it actually does make an attempt at it, and I'll show you that now. So on the Spectrum, if I'll do a, do a very short program, 10 print, and I'll just, I'll, I would have did just print hello, but I want to give it a significant number of bytes to save, maybe. See if we can get a couple of hundred bytes going here. So this is what's coming up on the screen. Okay. Okay. Quote. 20. Go to 10. Will we run it? It'll be a mess. <laughs> there we go. But at least it's a, it's a working program, right? So I should be able to save that to tape with save, speech marks, um, hi, speech marks, enter, start tape, then press any key. So what I want to do is, while in USB mode, I want to hold this in to start the recording. There we go, and then enter on the keyboard, and it should save. It's not making any noise, but it is going to save it. There we go, done. And... Hold the button in again to stop the recording. Now let's see if this will actually 
better pause. Let's see if this will actually load it back in. Load, quote, quote. And play. Nope, it hasn't even picked up the... Uh, let's try again. There we go, this time it picked it up. Or tape loading error, you see? So this was in no way using, hold on, this was in no way using, you know, the tape recording mechanism. It should have been a straight, the only analog part of this was from the spectrum through the cable to the tape recorder, then the analog to digital should have taken control and converted that to a nice little mp3 file which should have loaded back in okay it didn't so Bush I hate to say it but you had an almost brilliant product here it's gonna work fine for most people's needs I found it very reliable when loading my tape collection in off tapes um, and I've also found it very reliable not perfect, but certainly very reliable for most of the ROMs that I threw at it through USB. But in terms of actually recording anything using the Spectrum, saving anything from the Spectrum to this, whether to tape or to USB, it feels badly. Now I guess most people are really only interested in the Spectrum for being able to play the old games. Um, but if you have any inclination to type in some programs and save them, you will not be able to do that effectively with this tape recorder. So, that almost completes my review. I just want to mention one last thing. Um, I bought this on a recommendation from another YouTube review that I saw of it. Uh, but when I, when I went to Argos to buy it, there were conflicting images on the product. Uh, there was an image of this, and then there was an image of a similar tape recorder, which looked slightly different in that it had the USB connection on the side, and it had the USB control buttons up here along the top of the speaker. So when I bought it, that was the one they gave me, and it's known as the KCS317. And when I brought it home, it was dreadful. It would hardly load anything off tape. Uh, so I immediately brought it back and, and asked for a refund and got my refund. I then went on to eBay and sourced a second-hand CRS-132, which is that model, which is the one that I originally wanted. Uh, and I am much, much happier. It seems that Bush has replaced the CRS-132 with the KCS-317. I don't know why, because this is a far superior product. Um, yeah, so be careful which one you buy, folks. Uh, even the, the, the built-in speaker on the KCS317 was tinny beyond belief. Uh, this one is actually, although it's just a regular mono speaker and it doesn't have a lot of bass, it is kind of listenable by comparison. Um, so yeah, remember those uh, model numbers. This is the CRS132. This is the one that I recommend. Avoid the KCS317, which has its buttons along the top and its USB on the side. And as far as I know, it doesn't even have USB record. It's just USB playback. So there you go, folks. Hope you find this interesting, and I hope some of you might find this to be a useful product uh, for your own retro collecting. Bye.